Good morning, boys and girls. I just wanted to start out by saying hello, and I miss you guys so much. Um, it's been so hard not being in our regular PE classes, but I have equally loved the amazing videos and pictures and emails you guys have sent me about all the things you're doing at home and all the creative and fun ways you guys are being active with your families. And I just wanted to let you know that I am so proud of you and all the hard work that you are doing at home. And I wanted to take a minute today to read you guys a book. Um, I tried to think of a book that maybe not everyone had heard of before. And this book was given to my daughter before she was born. If you don't know, I'm from Maine originally. So this book is popular up in Maine, but maybe not so much here in Kentucky. It's called I Met a Moose in Maine One Day by Ed Shankman. And my daughter loves it, so I thought I would read this to you guys from her room today. I met a moose in Maine one day. Just how it happened, I can't say. I brushed my teeth, I combed my hair, and all at once, the moose was there. In Maine, as you know, the moose come and go. They relax in the streams, they make tracks in the snow. They live in the woods with the bear and the hare, and whatever they're doing, they do it out there. This is why, in this case, Something seemed out of place, to be here with a moose in my house face to face. The moose was so big, so wide and so tall, I was not sure at all he could squeeze through the hall. He tried to be small, and he made sure to crawl, but those antlers of his still made marks on the wall. I don't mean to suggest that the beast was a pest. In fact, I felt blessed just to have such a guest, because by any measure this moose was a treasure, his smile was charming, his manners a pleasure. We shared a few laughs, we talked quite a lot, and he told me some things that I never forgot. Then we played hide and seek, but it was no use. It seems this is not the best game for a moose. And then, after that, we decided to race. But a moose, when he runs, needs a great deal of space. He smashed every bottle and jar in the place, and the napkins I had were too small for his face. So I took him outside and we walked for a while, until we reached town, which is more than a mile. If you want to meet friends and you need an excuse, I suggest that you walk into town with a moose. All the people we passed stopped to give their regards, they leaned from their windows, they waved from their yards. Old men on their porches seemed very impressed that a neighbor of theirs had a moose for a guest. At the general store, people's chins hit the floor when the moose and I casually walked through the door. I bought a few things that a moose never buys because everyone knows a moose loves a surprise. I bought him some fudge and some great maple syrup. And boy, he liked that, because you know maple syrup's the best thing by far that anyone's ever put in a jar. And the hat, I must say, was precisely his size, in a blue that I thought really brought out his eyes. At night we went dancing, we really let loose, and there's nothing quite like letting loose with a moose. We did a few things that a moose rarely does, and if that sounds exciting, believe me, it was. But this was just one little village in Maine. There were so many to see, so we hopped on a plane. From Auburn to Belfast, from Friendship to Lee, the moose and I saw every sight we could see. We walked every walk and we viewed every view, and the moose and I met took me to Wallagrass, too. In Camden, a lot of us got on a yacht, and we docked before dark in a beautiful spot. We saw fish having fun, we watched seals eating meals. We met lobsters and otters and eagles and eels. In Bangor, we climbed on a raft made of logs and we floated down river with beavers and frogs. We hopped and we jumped and we walked, rocked and we rolled and we rushed through the rapids like loggers of old. We stopped off in Portland on a beautiful day to eat a fine lunch in an outdoor cafe. We ordered the salmon with blueberry juice, and there's no better juice you can drink with a moose. 
We left room for dessert because we heard that they make the world's best selection of chocolate mousse cake. When we'd all had our fun and our travel was done, we stopped by the roadside and stood in the sun. I think we were somewhere near Smithfield or Rome. When the moose and I met said it was time to go home. He gave me a wink and I gave him a smile. We hugged and he said our goodbyes for a while. Then he went on his way, but he made sure to say that he knew he would come back and see me someday. Now I know that my story may sound out of whack. Even I find it hard to believe looking back. But it wasn't a dream and it wasn't pretend. I did meet a moose and that moose was my friend. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed that book. Keep up the great work. I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait to see you when we get back to school. Bye.